Disney's D23 did not disappoint. We have a lot to talk about in my next couple of videos, and in this one, we're taking a look at the first teaser trailer for Star Wars Skeleton Crew. It just dropped, and oh boy, did it look fun. There is a ton to discuss in the minute and 42 second teaser, and so much to break down. Today we're looking at the most major easter eggs, things you missed, references, and some speculation for where I think this is going. Before we dive into all of that though, my dear friends, if you've not done so already, please be sure to hit the big subscribe button down below. If you're not subscribed, join the Megalorian ranks, it's the best decision you'll ever make. And also give the bell a good old tickle to be alerted every time that I post a new video. So no more jibber jabber, let's begin. Right off the bat, I love that Star Wars is expanding smaller corners of the galaxy during the New Republic, and not just focusing on the government, or Mandalorians, or in the case of Ahsoka, Force users. Yes, there are some in this show, but this is really the first time we're seeing middle-class suburbia in the galaxy far, far away. And it's bright, it's refreshing, and while it does look more Earth-like in terms of overall aesthetic, you can already tell the world-building is going to be wide-reaching and immense. As Jude Law himself acknowledged on stage at D23, while the show does have some Force connections, it's from the point of view of children, it's humble, and about everyday citizens in the galaxy post-episode 6. And our trailer begins from the perspective of the group of friends, who attend a school for New Republic officers and officials. And as you can imagine, their life is pretty mundane, pretty boring, not too much danger or adventure, and they miss that. And so the show starts with seeing them day to day going to school, and they're about to take one of the most important exams of their student lives. It was great to see Kerry Condon in the galaxy far, far away. Both her and Jude Law have been hyping this series for over two years. Now we need to address something very intriguing about the law this series is dealing with. In universe, the children, or at least Wim, know about and appear to glorify the Jedi. Especially in the post-Endor world, Luke's heroism is renowned throughout the galaxy, and if these kids' parents work for the New Republic, then it makes sense they're aware of him and the Jedi, and he's a good friend of Mon Mothma, Chancellor of the New Republic. Now I know it's going to be controversial that Star Wars is taking a more terrestrial approach with the visual style for a lot of this show, but the format works, especially for this kind of story. It looks way more like a TV show than the stagey look that we've gotten with some of the recent projects. I would say it's an interesting blend of retro-futurism, 80s style coming of age, with also some Stranger Things and Pirates of the Caribbean sprinkled in. One thing that stood out to me from the offset is that the aliens in this series are plentiful, and there is a good, diverse range of them too. And I'm glad John Watts, under the guidance and tutelage of John Favreau and Dave Filoni, took liberties with not being afraid to include both familiar and new creatures, leaning into the weird and wonderful which we love in Star Wars. I mean, take a look at the back of this student, who looks like a fluffy insectoid version of Yoda or something. And I'll admit, I chuckled when I saw an Ithorian walking his dog. Ithorians, also known as Hammerheads, are a classic Star Wars alien species dating back to A New Hope, and famous members include Momor Nadon, the Cantina Patron, Jedi Roran Karob, and the Antiquities Dealer, Doc Ondar from Galaxy's Edge. So, Star Wars Suburbia surprisingly works. Suggesting an adventure, one of the children, Wim, played by Ravi Cabot Conyers, leads his friends Fern, KB, and Neil to what they presume is an old Jedi temple, one that was abandoned, and that is where their escapade and adventure begins. We also get a closer look at Neil, who we assume is an Ortolan, the same species as Max Rebo, and it is disputed if he is half something else, because he's got hair on his head, and there are some other anatomical differences as well, but I'm gonna say he's probably an Ortolan, and they just took some liberties with the design to make him work in this setting, and to be honest, I think he looks great. And it's also pretty hilarious, he speaks galactic basic like this. And notice the badge on their school uniform, the emblem, is similar to the one that leaked on eBay over a year ago. So, the trailer does seem to jump around various parts of the series, so we can't always tell what's in chronological order, or exactly how everything connects. But they end up in the Onyx Cinder, the abandoned ship, which recently released as a Lego set, manned by the security droid SM-33, voiced by Nick Frost. They will come across pirates, smugglers, aliens, bounty hunters, even some Jawas at the cantina. You guys know, I jumped out my chair and shouted, 
and I think generally the overall creature design is a love letter to the expanded universe, getting very strange and very specific with some of the designs, and a big shout out to this little elf fella. I also want to point out, one of the little creatures in the cage is a direct callback to 1986's Captain EO, starring Michael Jackson and written by George Lucas himself. This creature is a one-to-one -one copy of Fuzzball, and there was a small Autoland creature in that movie as well, so they're drawing upon quite a lot from the 80s, which I really love. We also see one of the Shistavanan pirates, that's one of the werewolf species we spoke about in my last video. And yes, the big reveal at the end, Jude Law's character Jod Na Na Wood is a former Jedi, and he still seems to wield the Force, although in a pretty shaky way. The trailer tells the kids not to trust anyone, and I have a feeling he's gonna double-cross them. I can't wait to learn more about his backstory, and I suspect, once upon a time, he was a Padawan who survived Order 66, and I kind of wonder, what is his role in this portion of the timeline? How is he going to connect to Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau's wider Mandalorian plans? Now this is the bit that's really interesting. I'm more convinced than ever before, this series is going to connect to Ahsoka in some way, shape, or form. I predict the children are not going to get lost in their galaxy, but in the second one, in Peridia, which is where Grand Admiral Thrawn was taken by the Purgle. He's returned to the known galaxy, but Sabine, Hu Yang, and Ahsoka are still there, along with Balin and Shin. In the trailer, we see a giant crab-looking creature that is almost a menacing version of the Noti from Peridia, from the first season of the Dave Filoni show, and considering he worked on this, you never know, the kids might end up meeting Ahsoka and Sabine, and they could be the catalysts for getting them home. And also, something you may have missed, the kids find themselves in the middle of the New Republic's fight, with presumably either the Remnant or the Pirates. We're going to see more of the New Republic government, and also, some of the X-Wing squadrons. We see two of them flying over KB's head. And all of this, my dear friends, seems to suggest, Skeleton Crew isn't just a standalone. It's a fundamental part of the Mando story, which ties to Favreau's movie and what's coming next. And speaking of which, according to a new rumor by Jeff Snyder, John Watts is going to work on another project after this one, so Skeleton Crew could be multiple seasons, despite the alleged reports Lucasfilm was unhappy with it. But staying on the subject of the Mandalorian universe, we did get a major teaser trailer for the Mandalorian and Grogu, and there were some massive takeaways. For one thing, Din Djarin has a new Razor Crest. That's right, my dear friends, the Razor Crest 2, and one of the biggest rebel cameos from season 3 is back. Zeb Aurelios. Mando is working with the Delphi Squadron, and Zeb is along for at least one mission. Also, we're returning to Hoth. Din and Grogu ride in ATST and fight against Remnant AT-80s on the icy world. Not to mention snowtroopers, Din Djarin breaking into Imperial Remnant bases, and the return of the Anzellans. No Squeezy is back, and we're gonna see more character development for Grogu. This is enormous. I'm amazed they had some footage to show us, but this is some of the best news in a very long time. I should also point out, my dear friends, Skeleton Crew is a double episode premiere. Really awesome stuff, I'm loving the vibe, and I'm digging all of what's coming up in the Mandoverse. What do you guys think? Share your thoughts on all of this news in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, check me out on socials, and may the force be with you, always.